little talk with Jesus makes it bright. Sometimes my past seems drear without a ray of cheer. And in hope that may have the light of day, the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry skies. But just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. I'm thankful we'll be here tonight. Thankful for all of y'all that's come out this way. And, uh, you know, Sandy and y'all was singing there, you know. Uh, I never know the time, and I didn't need prayer. And, uh, yeah, Lord saved me, and I probably real high at one time, you know. We all understand that as we've been saved for a little while. But as we walk down this path, uh, we sure got to knock that old globe off. If we're going to be any kind of a light, we'll have to try to keep ourselves in pretty good standards with the Lord. And uh, that's the confidence I have in y'all and in this church. And uh, I like talking to you in here, and I love talking to you outside. The ones that I get to talk to, uh, you know, we can we can connect with what God's given us. And uh, that's what gets me from day to day, if you have it, you know, my walk of life. And, uh, so I never want to get above nobody praying for me, and I want to always be able to be in, if you'll have it, shape to pray for anybody that needs prayer. And uh, just thankful to be here tonight, and uh, we'll just follow what the Lord have us all to do tonight. We'll, we'll go away here saying we've been to church. We felt the Lord. The Spirit comes through, that's church, that's what it is. It's, it's a spiritual thing, we know, and so if he comes by and uh, fills our cups up, we'll, we'll get to rejoice and we can walk a little lighter step tomorrow if tomorrow comes. So just thankful to be here. If everybody just fall in, we'll you know, get another song. We'll come around fellowship and go to the Lord in prayer. One, two, three. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Nor pain nor death can enter there. I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. I live and breathe home in the fire. 
I've not been what we needed to. I had to fortune or the misfortune, whichever you want to call it, to go to a funeral today. And I thought the man that officiated the service did a good job of telling people what they need to hear. He told them that the one that was being buried today was no longer here. And if they wanted to see him again, they need to make preparations today. Not wait until after this life because it's too late. And you don't hear a lot of times in a place like that, you don't hear people told what they need to know. And I thought that was a good thing that he was talking to the people that was here and not the one that had gone on and telling them what they needed to do in order to meet that man again. And he said he left a good report that he was on his way to hell. And if they wanted to meet him again, they needed to talk to Jesus and make arrangements while they were still here. Yeah. And that's the best news that any of us could give someone would be to let them know that they need to get ready here in this world. That's what we're here for. It's a dressing room, if you will. You put on the cloak of armor for the Lord. And without that, you're not going to hell. Pray for me and my family when we pray. Oh, Lord, remember this, sir. There's someone else. I'd like to be on here today and I forgot to mention his books brought back out and sat there good back in that boat. He's at some problems. So y'all will be working and it'll be okay, but he'll be back. Wait on me back with running. He's uh, not interested in going to church back over where he always goes. I talk to him about it. He comes up. You know, up here because he, he likes it up here. You know, that's bring him to Lord. But I think he'll come on back, go to work with him. Just to be good. Well, this is There's someone else. <laughs> Certainly do have many this saving good to good to be back. Remember this our service, whatever it may hold. We <clears throat> still have a whole lot of things to pray about, sick folks and playing with and got you know, their walk at work and just you know, personal and whatever we we be playing with some sick folks and certainly remember those, remember our church and those that are on the road and wherever they may be, it's the Lord's blessing over them. Uh, thankful to be saved. Most of all, this thing they ever done. Could be someone else. Could be the, their testimony also. I think that those that truly get it, they'll tell you that's the best thing that's ever happened in their life. But, yeah. Good to be here. We appreciate everybody's coming this way. I prefer visitors to see or members alike. Oh, good. Is there someone else?
and um, she had cancer pretty much for a long, long time and battled with it. But <coughs> I know where she's at. I don't have to worry about it. Just remember the family, you know, her kids and grandkids and all that. Well, she needs her to God to give them comfort. If they're lost in that family, they can be saved here this time. You know, God can save here in a funeral as well as they can in church. Yeah. So, just remember that family. Remember this, there's someone else. I'd like us to try to remember uh, Mike Bennett's deal. He's got fluid that's sitting around his heart and lungs. He's got to go back on the second part And he's got some other health issues that's not good. Remember this church. Maybe someone else. I'm right about to take it to the one on high. Amen. Get no higher than I say. Wow. I don't mind trusting that today. Maybe there's someone else. I haven't been replaced this thing in a specialist bubble as I was on that. This member Joyce Collins and family, she sent a message out to family. Her sister Juan, his grandson, they found him uh, passed away yesterday. They don't really know what all happened to him or anything like that. She is asking the church to remember us, to remember them in Christ, and that's the name of them.
Certainly, again, good this evening to be here. See everybody come out this way. Good crowd tonight. We're thankful for your attendance. And we pray for your attention just for a little while. Thought about something that Brother Alex said he heard today and talk about uh, leaving a report. And uh, that'd be the, the best thing that you can do uh, for your family and for your friends and for all those is just to, to leave a report uh, that everything is all right in your life and uh, somewhere down the line that uh, you got to to know the Lord and met him and uh, receive that free pardon of sin that he, he's willing to give and uh, to leave that that behind and that's that's better than leaving a a blue grass farm and I believe to leave a, a good testimony behind and some people may differ with me on that and they, that's alright if they want to but um, as brother Johnny said what would a man give in exchange and uh, when it comes down to the end it don't matter how big your bank account is or how small it is it's what you done about this man named Jesus and uh whether or not you accepted his plan, uh, that was free. Uh, but uh, we're thankful to be here, and y'all pray just a little while. We uh, uh, thought about a few services ago. We uh, we uh, our thought was on being a friend, and and I thought about this this evening. Uh, I thought about being a neighbor. And we're going to read in the in the 10th chapter of the book of Luke, if you want to turn over there with me. Uh, we'll start reading about verse number 30. Uh, you all pray a little while. Uh, I pray that everybody here tonight is a, a neighbor, a neighbor to you, the people that lives next door uh, to you, but I also pray that uh, you may be a neighbor to Jesus as well. So chapter 10 of the book of Luke. Verse number 30, the Bible says, And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from, Jer from Jerusalem to Jericho and, and fell among thieves, and said in he was stripped of his raiment and wounded, and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead, fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and and departed, leaving him half dead. And verse 31 says, And by chance there came down a certain priest uh, that way, and when he saw him, says he passed by on the other side. And, uh, and likewise the Levite, when he was at the place, came and, and looked on him and passed by on the other side, it says. But a, a certain Samaritan as he journeyed, uh, came where he was, and when he saw him, uh, he had compassion on him. And he went up to him and, he, and bound his wounds and pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast and, and brought him to an end and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out uh, two pence and gave to them uh, to the to the host and said unto him, uh, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more when I come again, he said, I will repay thee. And which now of these, Jesus asked the question, which now of these three uh, thinketh thou was a neighbor uh, unto him that fell among the thieves? And he said, he that showed mercy on him. And then Jesus said unto him, Go and do thou uh, likewise. And, and I thought about this evening, uh, as far as he said, uh, which one was a neighbor unto him? Why, uh, we know that from what we read, uh, uh, the thieves, they weren't much of a neighbor to this man, was he? They, we understand that 
uh, they stripped him of his raiments and they wounded him and, and left him half dead there it says and a, and a priest came by a certain priest and uh, and we won't say all or anything like that but the Bible says a certain priest came by uh, and he passed by on the other side and it said a Levite came by and he passed by on the other side and, and if we're talking about neighbors this evening we see that uh, those weren't very good neighbors to this man but I'm thankful that uh, there's a Samaritan there the Bible says that came by and uh, it showed it showed him a little bit I, I thought about the three things that uh, that he showed the Bible says that he had compassion on him uh, and, and it says in verse 34 that he bound up his wounds uh, and it said it took care of him and I thought about how that uh, to be a neighbor means that uh, you might you might care for someone or you might have uh, compassion on someone and and I, I tell you what it's good I, I believe to have a good neighbor this evening. I think a neighbor uh, will go a little bit farther than anyone else for you. And, and you may say, well, preacher, you're talking about a natural thing. And I'm talking about a spiritual thing also. I, I believe a good neighbor is something good to have. And uh, the Bible talks about Jesus there, talked about uh, which one was a neighbor to this man. Well, uh, we understand that uh, to, uh, the Bible says uh, one of the great commandments is to, uh, to love our neighbors as ourselves. And, and I thought about this seed and how that uh, that Samaritan done all those things for him and, and I believe he cared for him and, and I thought about this seed and I, I thought about a man that cares for me and, and I thought about how that uh, the Lord's my neighbor this seed and, and, and you may say well uh, you're here on Greasy Creek uh, uh, he sits atop the throne in heaven today and, and how can he be your neighbor I, I think he cares for me this seed and, and, and I'll tell you what uh, if you're here lost and undone, I, I believe he has compassion on you this evening. That, and I, I believe he's willing to, uh, this very day uh, if you'd let him to mound your wounds up and, and come in and, and fix the things that's wrong in your life. And, and I'm glad that one day that, uh, buddy, I'll tell you what, I, I'm glad that one day that uh, he came in my life and, and when he didn't have to have compassion yet, uh, he did have compassion. And, and when he didn't have to save me. I, I, he still loved me enough that he was willing to save me anyway. When he didn't have to do all those things. But he loved me anyway, didn't he? And I thought about how this, this Samaritan, he, uh, he could have passed by just as well on the other side of the road. But he wanted to be a neighbor. I, I would think, I would hope that uh, the people around me, uh, not only the ones that live beside of me, uh, but the people up and down the road, uh, I pray that they consider me to be a neighbor and, and more than just uh, uh, out of this mouth in a way, but uh, knowing that I uh, truly would help uh, if they needed my help. I pray that they see me that way today. I tell you, I, I see the Lord Jesus said, oh, I. And I, and I see you good folks that are I, a neighbor that would help. But I'll tell you what, a person had to come up here and we just, we just come up just a little bit a while ago and we got down on our knees and, and we cried out to the Lord for, uh, for those that are sick and, and the prayer request for those that are lost. And, and I believe we wanted to have compassion. I, I believe we want to be a neighbor to those folks. If they'll let us be their neighbor, they'll let us be it. I want to help one another and the best that I can. How about the Lord's give me a platform to do that today? He's given me a place to stand right here in this good church to be a neighbor to a lost and dying world out here to be a neighbor to those that uh, come through this door and, and sit in these pews to, to be a neighbor to those up and down the road. I'm I just, I, I just not a preacher in this house, but I, when I walk out these doors and, and as I've heard some say, a Sunday morning Christians, I, I'm just not a Christian on Sunday morning. I'm a, I'm a Christian on Monday morning too. And, and I I want the world to see something, Brother Mike. I, I want to see. I want them to see me as a neighbor. I want them to see me on Tuesday morning and being what I said I was on Sunday and, and all through the week. I, I want them to know that uh, that Jesus loves them, and I want to show them that uh, through and by my walk in this life, through my mind. 
this Samaritan, when he came to him, he saw him there. And it says he went to him. And he bound up his wounds. And pouring in oil and wine and set him on his own beast. And brought him into an end and took care of him. But he cared for you. He cared for him. He showed compassion on him. And you know what? Jesus cares for you and I this evening. And he's willing to show compassion. And let me read. I, I've got some scripture that goes with it. Back over in chapter 4 of the book of Luke. In verse 18. And let me read this. And you all keep praying. It says the Spirit. This is the words in red. It says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to the to heal the brokenhearted, uh, to preach deliverance uh, to the captives, and recovering of sight uh, to the blind, and and to set at liberty them uh, that are bruised, and uh, to preach the acceptable a uh, year of the Lord. And, and I thought about all these things that the Lord is to you and I today, and and I thought about how He's truly uh, who's His neighbor. Uh, we know that the Samaritan was a neighbor. Uh, who's my neighbor today? Uh, Jesus Christ is my neighbor. Uh, he come to heal my broken heart. Uh, uh, he came to save my soul. Uh, uh, he came to show compassion on me. Uh, and I'll tell you what, uh, when I met him at an old altar, uh, he gave me everything that heaven had. Uh, and I believe it opened the doors. Uh, and I believe he wrote my name in, in that Lamb's Book of Life uh, uh, forever to be there and to never be removed. On the power of heaven itself and on the power of Jesus Christ himself. Just as sure as he came out of that tomb, victorious over that, through and by my acceptance in that one day, I became victorious over the tomb. I became victorious over death, hell, and the grave. And when I accepted the plan of salvation that he brought forth to me one day, my neighbor came. My neighbor came and he gave me some good stuff. That'll last forever. I had a good neighbor one day, naturally. He'd, he'd knock on the door and we'd go to the door and there would be some tomatoes or something in a bag just hanging on the doorknob. And he's, his name was Perry and you all all know him. He was a good neighbor, naturally. Good neighbor, naturally. And I, I make a comparison in those things this evening. I make a comparison how the Lord Jesus is my neighbor. He came to heal my broken heart. He came to, to fix up the bruises that I have. But he poured in that wine and oil in those or that save and, and he worked on that one day. I'm thankful that he brought his love to me one day and he fixed me just as I was. A broken heart, lost and undone. Uh, dead in trespasses and sin and, and all those things that we can come up with. But my Lord came and, and he was a neighbor to me and, and he saw me laying beside a roadway if you'll have it that way. And, and he reached out his hand one day uh, to pick me up uh, out of the morning clay and, and to set my foot upon a rock and, and to dust me off and, and make me a fit subject for the kingdom of heaven. My Lord did that for me one day. Just as the old Samaritan there. But he showed compassion on him, didn't he? Listen, I'll let him get us a song and I'm going to read, uh, read this again. The words in red. Jesus, my Lord, said the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel or preach that good news to the poor. Well, I'm glad he come to I'm glad he comes to the poor and he comes to all, ain't you? Didn't have to have no big titles or big names. But he saw me one day just as I was. To preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to 
those, to the captives. And that's me also. All delivered me one day and recovering of the sight to them, to the blind, and to set liberty to them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, I tell you what, this evening, if you're in the clutches of sin, you're in captivity this evening. If you've never been saved, I believe you're blinded to what you need to say. And I pray this evening that the Lord has come along and He's willing to open the door. He's willing to, to, to take the stocks off of you or the chains that bind you. That He's willing to fix that broken heart that you may have. But it is a heartbreak that only the Lord can fix. I, I declare it to be true. Only a heartbreak that He can fix. And buddy, I tell you, he can, he can take the scales off your eyes and let you see something other than yourself, other than the world. Let you get your eyes focused on something. Oh, I'm glad that one day I got my eyes focused on heaven. And I, and I made assurance that I was going to go one day. How to do that? But I know all their prayer. I called out on him and he met me there. He met me there and he done those things, I believe. Preacher, we never know of you to be blind. No, I never was naturally blind. But I one day I was spiritually blind. But I'm glad when I got up off of that old makeshift altar that evening. But he got my eyes right. He got my heart right. And I, if you'll have it, he got my mind right. Because this right here, when it got fixed up, buddy, this began to change. Now, I know there's still warfare going on. I'm not saying there's not. But she began to change. Begin to change. What I once done, I didn't do anymore. What I once loved, I hated. But, buddy, what I once hated, I now loved. I now loved. If you're here this evening and you may say, Preacher, I'm broken hearted. Preacher, I'm blind to this. The Lord's opened my eyes this evening. I need to be saved. I believe the Lord's given us another opportunity to meet. You may be here and say, Well, things just ain't right in my life. Hey, you know what? The Lord gives us another opportunity to meet. It's Wednesday night. But I'll tell you what, it's okay. How the Lord still shows up on Wednesdays. I'm glad He shows up on Mondays and, and I'm glad He shows up on Fridays. I, I'm glad He shows up every day of the week. And if I'll search after Him and if I'll call after Him, I'll tell you what, He'll come and show Himself to me. He'll show Himself. And tonight, you may be these things. You may feel like you're beside the wayside. You may feel like you're half dead beside the road robbed, beat you may feel that away well I tell you what there's a, there's a neighbor there's a neighbor today willing to help you a neighbor a neighbor not a thief not a certain priest not a Levite but a good neighbor his name's Jesus Christ and he's willing to heal that broken heart as we stand and sing this evening. What about it today? What about it? Boy, I'm glad that he came one day my way. I'm glad that he did. I'm glad he I'm glad that when he saw me at my worst, when he saw me at my lowest, half dead if you'll have it. He was the good Samaritan. He was the one that had compassion. He was the one that fixed me up. And he told the keeper of the inn, if I owe you anything, 
I'll pay it when I come back. Boy, I'm glad that he paid every debt that every one of us owed. Not only the debt for sin, but he paid it for me and you one day. We we know that it's a debt that he didn't owe, but I'm glad he paid it anyway. I'm glad he paid it for you. Paid it for you. Paid mine. Will you let him help you? Will you let him be your neighbor? Old fellow could have just said, I'll stay by the roadside here and die. But no, he let that Samaritan help him, didn't he? Will you stay by the roadside and die, or will you let the Lord help you? Will you let him be your neighbor? Gentlemen, we appreciate you this evening. Continue to remember the revival going on at Fusion Chapel, 7 o'clock each night this week. As far as I know, still going on. I've had an opportunity to go. Maybe we'll get to before the week's out. But uh, thankful to be here. Thankful for the, the thought that the Lord gave me. Thankful that I've got a neighbor. I truly am a true neighbor, a true neighbor, and uh, we appreciate that. We appreciate your house prayers this evening. We appreciate your attendance by all means. I wonder at this time if anyone might have a word of testimony or anything on your heart before we come to a close. We certainly appreciate you this evening. We certainly do. Honored to have one more time to stand here. One more time to have a platform to tell you about my neighbor, tell you about my friend. But, uh, Brother Ellick, you want to dismiss us this evening? Well, we're about around where they head this evening. Thank you once again for the many blessings. Thank you, Lord, for all you do for us day in and day out. I believe you realize it or not. Asking if you go with us as we depart this place and go to our homes with the boat or where we might be headed and we'll give us safe passage if it be your will. We'll be careful to give you the honor, the glory, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name, I'm the Amen. Amen. Amen.